All right, before we kick this off, this video is sponsored by Sweetwater. Thank you, Sweetwater. I'm gonna put some links down in the description because today's guest and I actually have a lot of the same gear that we use and love. So if you guys are interested in any of the stuff you see or you're interested in any of the stuff that either Joe or I use, check the links in the description. They're affiliate links, they take you to Sweetwater so you can check out the gear that you're interested in. So it's 2022, I'm here in Nashville currently, and we're gonna kick off the year's Epic Studio Setup Series with my friend Joe Carroll. Joe is a producer, a Grammy-nominated engineer, he is a musician, a fellow drummer, and he actually has two studios. He has a tracking room in Berry Hill, and then he has a mix room at his home. But today we're gonna go check out his tracking room at Treasure Isle, which is in the legendary neighborhood of Berry Hill. Joe was a great hang. You may have actually seen him on YouTube already because he's done a lot of content for different plug-in companies and microphone manufacturers. Like he did a bunch of warm audio videos. So you may have already seen him around. If not, I will link to him down in the description. Go give him a follow and check out some of his stuff. Thank you, Joe, for having me out. And thank all of you guys for following me on Instagram and sending me different studio recommendations because we're going to texas soon we've got a few trips planned over the next few months so if you're not following me follow me on instagram because i love to ask you guys for recommendations of studios to check out all of the links are down in the description don't forget to smash the like button smash the subscribe button and notification bell for the youtube algorithm drop a comment down below let me know what you guys think of joe's studio anything you guys might have or anything you think i should check out i actually got something new i don't know if you noticed sitting over here that's really really special actually a couple different things but yeah that's it let's go check out joe's studio right. joe hey thank you for having me you're very welcome nice pleasure to meet, you, to, to meet you and see the studio for the first time how long have you been here and what is the name of the studio the name at least currently is treasure isle uh, which uh, the, the building itself goes back to the business goes back to the early 80s 81 i believe uh, i've moved here about probably about five years ago now time is okay is marching on so i use this as my primary tracking uh room but but it is a commercial space that's uh, available to rent so okay. anybody watching that wants to cut here can can give us a, a shout yeah and yeah. we're we're here in barry hill which has yeah. a lot of studios a lot of studios i've yeah. got a lot of really cool blackbird is my neighbor yeah. you know uh, it's a lot of a lot of i've heard there's something like 50 in just a couple square miles which wow. is Hard to believe, but that's what they, that's what I'm told. This is just the, the, the little lobby reception area, but come on into the A room here. You're kind of surprised when you come in from the street, you know, the front of a, if anybody knows anything about Berry Hill, the front of most of our buildings still look like houses from the 40s, yeah. because that's what they were. It was a military right. housing base. But, you know, they built this on in the back, you know, in the uh, late right. 70s, early 80s, and you don't even realize how when you walk in towards the back, it continually steps up. Yep. And as you're going to see, the ceiling height in here is insane. It's yeah. 24 foot, wow. you know, and we got three levels of, you know, storage on, on this on this side. So it's like it's wow. a three story building. Yeah, so, that's awesome. So you got a nice kitchen here. Yep. Get some co make some coffee. You have their lunch. Soda pop. It's nice and spacious. <laughs> yes, it is. It's very and that, that fireplace. You know, I, I've never seen a fireplace. Uh, in a commercial studio before. Yeah. Um, and to my knowledge, it's never been lit. Uh, yeah. Now we are in a little bit of a transition day. We finished wow. a tracking session and um, we're getting ready to do another one. So um, it's kind of in transition right now. It's beautiful in here. Yeah, it's I um, love like I space. said, pe people are shocked when they get in here. They, from the road, they have no idea that the, the room is this, is this large. And, this is, uh, this is actually my house kit. Uh, th this is one of mine. Beautiful. It gets used a lot. Y yeah. You know, I mean, back in the day, um, you know, cartage was the big thing. All the studio drummers had, mm -hmm. you know, th the successful drummers a lot of times had three kits in cartage. And, yeah. you know, they would have one set up in one studio from 10 a.m. till five, and then they would go to another studio at six, yeah. and their other kit would be in there, you know, for Ready their evening. Go. It was just a, a different thing now you know with budgets being you know such a different thing um house kits are more of a deal and studios like like this one that has an amazing house kit like we like we do um we have a couple of them the, both of them being wfl a lot of different side like for example the session that's happening on friday is uh, the guy wants a 24 inch kick so we can just swap it you know we can give them whatever they want tom sizes 
kick sizes, uh, you know, great snare collection. That way they don't have to bring as much of their own stuff. You know, it's just a, it's a different era of sessions than it was back in the... It's nice know, to just have it yeah, here though. The glory days of the 90s, you know, I remember drummers having, like it, it was like a closet on wheels. You yeah. opened it and it'd be like 16, 20 snare drums in there, yeah. you know. So you have the WFL3 kit. What kind of snares do you have over uh, here? I have a, a, well on the, with the kit right now, what, oh, yeah. what we, where we left off the other day, this is their, uh, they call it the 1909. It's a WFL aluminum drum, yeah. six and a half. Uh, super, really with WFL drums, what I found, the, the thing that impressed me almost the most, the tuning ranges are crazy wide, even like oh, on yeah. the toms. Like you can get ridiculously low and they still have tone, not just a head slap, you know? Um, but this, so this drum, <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's um, you know, variety of sounds that it, it gives. But it, it's, I would say it's our most popular drum. Yeah. You know, when drummers come in and use mostly all our own gear. And then I have a, a black, this is not a real black beauty. This is a, mm. the pork pie, I think. Okay. Uh, they call it big, the big boy or the big black. I, I can't remember what they call it, but it's a six and a half brass, you know, with nickel coating over it. Yeah. This is <laughs> a little bit of a pride and joy for me. I bought this in like 1992, new. Yeah. It's a pearl uh, free floater brass. Yep. And you know, sometimes the piccolo, the high, the high pitched piccolo crack is just the thing. Yeah. And I love, you know, cause this set in storage for years. And so now when I, when I am working in here and somebody pulls that out to match a specific song and I get to hear something that I bought, you know, as a 20 whatever year old kid, mm -hmm. it's kind of, it's pretty satisfying, yeah. you know, to, yeah, that it's still living a life and, Heck yeah. and, and, you know, uh, and when useful. it works too. Yeah. And works great. This is a WFL mahogany drum. Mm. Um, it, it, this is a monster. It's probably you know number two or three on the wow. on the roster of the most used because again the tuning range is crazy wide that that thing can just smack God, really it's high pitch beautiful it's too. gorgeous and you ought to hear it and and you know I've had guys tune it really low and and I, I was just hmm. it's you know as you can tell it's tuned up a little bit right now but I was amazed at how how swampy it, it was able to get tuned low it. Man, I'm telling you what, the WFL three, you know, the William Ludwig drums. Yeah. They are as legit, <laughs> you know, uh, so they may be new to some guys, and but I, I'm in love with them. That's it's all I have here. I, I, I had a Gretsch kit in, in storage and I don't even have it anymore. It's all, all WFL, but that's a Yamaha Maple. Okay. Um, I think that's a Pearl Sensitone uh, steel. Um, oh, cool. That one gets drug out. This is kind of cool. I bought a kit years ago when I, I, I I'm a drummer. And I used to do NASCAR dates. Oh, really? And, and I, I, you know, you don't want to take a nice kit to a NASCAR <laughs> event. Yeah. So I bought this cheap Pacific kit. You know, that's the W uh, DW like Mexican made drums. Yeah. Um, and this came with it, and it's been in the back of trailers at all temperatures. You know, it, yeah. just thrown around like, and it's still got the original heads. Wow. And I'm not going to change them. Like it's just yeah. not a thing. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just it just has a, this swampy. Leave the strainer loose. Tune it down. Yep. It's a, Oh, Fleetwood yeah. Mac. Yep. I just think Fleetwood Mac. It's that douche. You yes, know, kind of thing. Exactly. And this is a kind of an unsung hero. A little Yamaha um, birch drum that it gets pulled out quite a bit. It's got some. It's got some snap. But um, like I said, we're getting ready. We're getting ready to change it out to a 12, 13, 16 with a 24. So uh, beautiful. And you know, that's the just the name of the game. Um, this is 22. This is a 22 inch kick. Yeah. 13, the drum, 16. 13 and 16. Yep. Yeah. Every Every drummer has their, you know, different thing. And then these cymbals, they're all heartbeat. I've these are heartbeat. These. these are these are house kit cymbals. I've got a pretty good collection of these and Peisties. Um, nice. These these are probably the most common house kit cymbals that, that get pulled out. The Peisties are kind of the old 90s sizes. Yeah. A lot smaller, a lot more yeah. 16 crash, 17 a crash. Brighter. A lot brighter, uh, 14 inch, like crispy hi-hat. Um, these are the bigger, more current, like this is a 20 inch crash, I think. Mm -hmm. That's a 19 this is like a 22 inch crash it's it's just the bigger that's fun yeah, it's where things are at right now look yeah. at that i mean that's like a 16, 16 yep they're 15 or 16. i've got a couple of their hi-hats and a couple of their rides and so i wanted to ask you about these microphones because mm -hmm. i see are these the wa84s uh, there's a combination the, the the overheads are the the warm audio 84s okay and i've got Oh, I bet I have seven or eight of them here. Wow. Uh, I have three of the vintage ones, which is what this is, the okay. KM84s. Always uh -huh. loved them, but yep. 
The problem with KM84s isn't the sound. The sound is amazing. The, the problem is that they have a very low output and they are noisy because you have to gain the fire out of them, you right. know, right? It, it, depending on the source. These sound like a KM84, but they have a much hotter output and they're quieter. So to me, like, I, I, I gotta tell you, I hardly use my, the, the vintage ones anymore. Wow. Like I always use these first yeah. because they just, um, they, they're, they're better. I, I hate to say that there's a lot of purists out there that'll probably send me hate mail, but sure. that's just my my take on it. But um, I'll put the that, address in the description. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the W84 on the hi hat as well. I, I switched between that and a 451 AKG. They're, they're both, you know, they're both fantastic. You'll see uh, on the toms I have. I switch between um, when I'm engineering. You know, yeah, yeah. other people do. Sure. We have 421s. We have 57s. Uh, but but these are the warm audio 47. Uh, Junior. Juniors, yeah, yeah. which it's a, it's not a recreation of, but it's a FET mic. Right. So it's the same capsule that they put in their big tube mic, but it's a, in a FET circuit, so it's much cheaper ah. to produce. And even though they didn't pattern it after a FET 47, like to be true to it, sure. Um, we we switched them out one day just for fun. I yeah. was working a session and I had my typical 414s on there. Yeah. I'm a big AKG 414 yeah. fan uh, on Tom Toms. The, the 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 silver face one, not the gold. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, they're too they're a little too crispy and bright for me. But anyway, we put these on just to see what you know. Like I wonder what these sound like because they just seem like a workhorse. Plugged them in. I told my my assistant, you know, turn on Phantom, and the drummer hit it, and the whole room, you know, had musicians in it. You know, yeah. bass player, guitar, yeah, and everybody yeah. went. Boom! Whoa. I'm like, holy, we're on to something. Yeah, yeah. So I've been using them, uh, you know, mixing them in the 414s ever since. Um, that's awesome. I've never tried the juniors, but that's probably going to be and, the next one. An absolute workhorse, and they're three hundred dollars. Wow, it's crazy. Yeah. And you know, when you run a room like this, you have to have a lot of gear. We do a lot of orchestra dates, so like, you know, people like, uh, you know, it's like I have one vintage '67, and then I have two warm audios people like i'm surprised to see the warm audio went in here like it sounds like as good basically but it's way cheaper and i can yeah. afford more of them yeah you know so it, it just works for me you know to Great. teach his own i mean don't get me wrong i would love to have a, a lot of full of uh, vintage annoyments i would love that but sure. you know that's uh, i have a few thousand each but, but yeah yeah i just don't uh, i'm in the music business so i don't have that kind of money <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> right uh, and then what is this little golden guy then? Oh, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked. So, you know, very common for me is snare top and bottom. I like to hear the strainer again, because I am a real drummer. That is a ribbon mic though. That's a Cascade, they call it a Gomez. Mm. And this is a mic that they made with Mike Jolly. I think his name is, you know, the Jolly okay. Mod guy. Uh, I'm he, not you can send mics, certain models to him and he'll upgrade them and make them more like a, you know, a, a vintage great thing. Interesting. But anyway, they, they teamed up with him for this. And the whole idea is um, it's a ribbon mic. Mm -hmm. So you it's figure eight, mm. which means that right here, this is a null point, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. the hi-hat bleed is oh, right. a lot more minimal than you expect. Yeah. But I'm getting the strainer and the and the and the body of the snare drum as and well the as the beater slap of the kick drum. Yep. And because it's a ribbon, you know, it starts and it's a short ribbon. It's not so its frequency response starts diving, right? At, okay. at around 6k or something starts rolling off. Cool. And and so you can take an 1176 and kind of crush that guy a little bit mm. and say in a verse of a song, all the ghost notes. Oh yeah. The backbeats are covered with the with the 57s, right? Yeah. But all those ghost notes, they're real mid you you can bring this up yeah. And it's mid-range nature pushes those ghost notes up. Yeah. So all of a sudden, like the depth of the pocket, if that makes any sense, yeah, that yeah. the drummer's playing, feels more, it feels deeper, feels yeah. groovier. Sure. And you can, you can turn it down in the courses and stuff if you want to, but I never do. Like yeah. I, once I find a place for it, I usually just leave it. And it's not right for every song, Sure. but it, it's a cool trick. It's a cool trick if guys want to try that. That's great. And then it, what is this guy in the front here? Are you uh, United? That, there's two mics there. I've got the B52 Sure on the inside mm -hmm. and the uh, United. That's not a, that's not a vintage Fet 47. Again, like I said, I'm in the music business. I don't, I don't have that kind of money. That is, uh, they call it United Studio Technologies. And a, a friend of mine that, he actually worked at Warm Audio at one time, and that's how I knew him. And he designed this and, and uh, was, you know, I, I saw some really great reviews mm -hmm. and I uh, thought, well, I'll try one. And sure enough, it, I mean, it does the job. I, I really like it. That's great. Yeah, yeah. And you'll notice I keep them, 
you know, I, I don't like too much beater slap. You know, because it's sure. easy to EQ that in, but it's sure. really hard to get rid of it. Yeah. So I keep the drum, the, the, the kick drum mic pretty far out. Sure. And so this and this are basically time aligned, so I don't have phase yeah. issues, you know, from, from different depths. Yeah. So um, that kind of works for me, you know, to each his own. That's great. Yeah. And then I notice you have the baffles here. Yeah, the, the, okay, so these are really cool and they're very portable. So for example, um, some engineer, now I, I kind of like a big sound. Sure. So I, I typically back them up, but uh, you know, like um, the the guy that does all the Jason Aldean stuff, you know, they, they do all that stuff here. Oh, cool. He's got a great history, man. Pat Benatar, like, wow. uh, yeah, he's Blondie. Um, but he, he likes, maybe because he's from a different era, you know, he pulls these way up yeah. and closes it in and only uses one mono room mic that oh, cool. points away. Yeah, yeah. You know, whereas I use like a stereo pair, you know, an Omni. It's a, just different schools of thought. But, yeah. you know, if you've ever heard a Jason Aldean record, I mean, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a great engineer. His name's Pete Coleman, by the way, if anybody wants to Google him. We do a lot of uh, orchestral dates in here. Yeah. And so um, this room is ridiculous good with orchestra brass for example I bet. we take these and just move them completely to the other end of the room okay and that way the brass oh. can hit the, this wood wall yeah and it sounds alive you know it's like um we actually mic the, in addition to micing the 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 room and micing the 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 horn direct you know with close mics we actually mic the stereo pair we mic the wall Wow. In cardioid facing facing the wall and you can compress that a little bit bring it up and it's yeah. like you know capital records in the 60s like big band or something it's it's a monster monster room 24 foot ceilings lots of you know wood floor wood walls and ceiling on this end wow um so strings strings sound great over here we get a lot of string work come through it, this studio is kind of a throwback yeah well it's it's nice to be able to come to a place like this and have uh, flexibility mm -hmm. which is really what you're getting with yeah. you know this is kind of what we've looked at so far but you've got Handful of booths here. As oh well. yeah, several booths. If you wanna, you wanna look yeah, inside. Yeah, let's, let's check out let's this one. This, this is a, you know, the biggest one. And if I'm guessing, Andrew, mm -hmm. this room is is so big with its high ceilings, um, because you know when they started building this, it would have been the late '70s, right? Yeah. You're coming out of an wow. era when drums were in booths and very small yeah. and, and, and dead sounding, right? Drummer so, in here. So um, I think, I, if I was guessing, you know, yeah. no one can talk to the designers of the place now, they're, they're long gone, but um, I'm guessing this was supposed to be a drum room. And then shortly after that, drums got, you know, records, really everybody big. wanted their drums to be lar larger than life. And so I've never even put a drum in here. Usually what I do is guitar amps. Uh -huh. uh, there's a little pass through. Um, I, I do upright bass in here a lot. Oh, nice. Um, every once in a while, saxophone, uh, fiddle, yep. put fiddle players in here. Uh, in fact, this is the vintage uh, 67. I had it in here doing a vocal the other day, but a couple days before that, it was on a on a fiddle. You know, you can't go wrong with the 67 on on fiddle. Yeah, but, that's um, nice. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, it, you can't probably see it, but the ceiling is absorbent. Yeah. And the floor is Sounds absorbent. And there's just, just enough of these that even though you see quite a bit of exposed, you know, sheetrock, yeah. it, 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 vocals sound good in here. Yeah. They, they really do. Because when I the, when I first came in here, when I was trying to figure out where I'm going to start putting everything, I, I remember being just a little like concerned that vocals would maybe have just a little too much room, and, and it doesn't. It sounds it sounds great. And then you guys have the private cue systems. Those are the bomb.com with the better connectors. The, I'm telling you. I, 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 I've worked on a lot of different headphone yeah. systems, and we all know there's some really good ones and some really bad ones. Yeah. This is an all analog system yeah. with a really, really great amplifier. Wow. Um, yeah, but and clean, yeah. like it's punchy. So it it matters, you know. Players when they come here and work, they they, they very often comment, you know, if they've not been here before, sure. about the sound of the of the the cue. If it's inspiring to them, they're going to play better. Yeah. You know, especially. Not as, not as much maybe the studio players, but especially guys that are a little pro-am or bands that only make it into the studio every once in a while. Oh, yeah. Like, the, you know, the more inspired they are, the better. So this, this was, a, I have nothing but great things to say about these. And then what are you putting out here a lot of the time? On, on your typical rhythm section day, if you're it's like a band, I'll ge yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll de generally have electric set in here, okay, and that's just because the pass through, sure. So that he can feed his cabinets. Okay, so like 
chair station. Right, right. We'll have uh, sometimes two. Yeah. You know, like uh, on the Jason Aldean stuff, for example, they have two electrics going at once, yeah. plus a steel guitar amp, so three amps. Yeah. So we'll have both electric stations here, and then we put, you, you know, these gobos being on wheels, they'll go anywhere they want to. Yeah. So we'll split that room in two if we have two electric players with live amps, yep. and, and, and they'll set right here. Um, mo that's most of the time, you know. Over here we have the bass player um, because generally they're really ugly and we don't want to see their face. <laughs> from the, so they're facing this way and I don't have to put up with, with that. That is that's true. A, that's a joke for Jacob Lowry and Duncan Mullins. So uh, <laughs> maybe Mark Hill too, those guys. <laughs> No, those are good looking guys right there. But anyway, just that just seems to be how it works out. Yeah. And a lot of times if we have steel, they sit right here okay. um, because it, invariably their cabinet ends up upstairs. It's basically, you know, a sister to this booth that you'll see here in a minute, but it's a great, we don't, players don't want to walk up and down that, that stairway. Yeah, yeah. So we'll just throw cabinets up there, you know, generally steel, oh, wow. but you know, the electric has been up there before. The, the keyboard player generally has all their stuff right here. So um, we, we do have a, I don't see it, but we have a um, Wurlitzer. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that's at, it's probably in the tech room. But so they can set, you know, have the B3 here, have the Whirly here, their, their, their keyboard. You know, most of them travel with a Nord or something nowadays sure. with a laptop. So they kind of have this, yeah. you know, this little, you know, uh, cubby with the, with, the, with the headphone box and and they can kind of make themselves at home. We a lot of times put a lamp, a floor lamp over here, so light it up and um, works out really, really well. And well, it's, it's really nice to have, you know, like when you have a session like that, to have all the guys or people oh, out yeah. here together. Sight lines are pretty good here. Uh, oh, it's and, amazing, all the windows. Yeah, the way Nashville works is still, uh, thank God, you know, we're so lucky. Mm -hmm. We're one of those last few towns that seemingly does a lot of records with everybody in the room at one time. Yeah. And there's, I mean, I, I produce as well, and you know, so I do the build a track from pop, on pop songs and I'm programming a kick drum, you know, yeah. like from the ground up and no one's ever in the room at the same time. But there's nothing like, you know, drums, bass guitar, electric yeah. guitars, scratch vocals, keys, you know, depending on the session, you know, saxophone, yeah. steel guitar, fiddle, like everything happens from, you know, from the time the drummer says, you know, one, two, three, four, yeah. and like it sounds like an album. You know, it's it is just nothing like it. And that, and you know, another big thing, Andrew, is the creative minds that are in the room together. Yeah. You know, that the, does the, the session studs that we have in this town are the most unbelievable musicians I've ever seen in my life. You know, and they still I've been doing it for over 20 years full time, and they still inspire me every day. Like just to, you want to be as good as they are. Yeah. And you're like I want to be in as good in the control room as they are out here. Yeah. And um. Because of that, you know, you get that many creative geniuses in one room, the song always turns out better than what the artist intended. Yeah. They may have a really firm idea of the arrangement, you know, this is how it's gonna work. And invariably, somebody will say, hey, what if? And they'll be like, yeah, yeah, that's better. <laughs> you know, it, it just, get, they're, you, you know, they're, they're geniuses, they really are. I mean, it's hard to, that, that word gets thrown around pretty, you know, freely, but it, they really are brilliant musicians. And they're usually like, taming it a little bit on sessions too. Well, yeah, it depends. It, it, they have to be able to do everything, yeah. you know, and there's a political side to thing. Yeah. There's artists that, you know, um, are pretty protective and yeah. there's artists that are pleased. Like if you have an idea to make this better, give it to me, you know, yeah. they, they kind of got to read the room. Yep. But we, you know, we do too as engineers, we, cause we, we're the ones that's actually in the room with the artists. Oh most, yeah. You know, in here we got the, you know. Yeah, the, let's check it out, yeah, this is yeah. beautiful. I've never seen one this color. Yeah, you don't see many white. The only, I've only seen one other studio in Nashville. Is this a seven? This is a C7 oh. uh, down on Music Row. Do you, you know where Soundstage is? That's uh, a le legendary room down there. Uh, I used to rent space there, as a matter of fact. Oh, it, gosh. It's if you'll note, when you play, if you really dug in, you yeah. would think, man, this is a, it's a touch on the bright side, but it doesn't record as bright as what it sounds in here, you know? Um, but we, wow. yeah, uh, oh, oh, what I was gonna say, Soundstage has a, the, in, in the backstage room has a white one. I haven't a been there in a couple one. years. Wow. I, I assume they still have the white one, but yeah. uh, that's, a, that's a cool room, Soundstage. Uh, you know, we keep the Leslie in here, much to the chagrin of our piano tuner, you know, because <laughs> you know, he, he claims that, you know, when the tubes heat up and, and then oh, turn yeah. off and then t get heat up and then turn up. So these are what you swap with the toms? 
Uh, the yeah, yeah, the AKG 414s. The, these nice. are the newer ones, you know, with the with the um, the C414s, yep. with the uh, electronic switching. Uh huh. And uh, usually on piano, I, I kind of I bounce around between those when I want something that's a little more neutral. They're not a bright microphone. Yeah. Uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And then I, I have uh, the Warm Audio um, 251s, mm. which are bright. Yeah. And so I kind of bounce back and forth. And uh, we, we'll see when we get in the control room, but I got some, um, a couple different EQs that I could put in path and, you know, because we've been doing some jazz lately mm -hmm. and they want things to be really dark a lot of times. And that's, you know, it's a, a Yamaha C7 is it's not, not a dark, dark piano. Right. Yeah. So if I have a high, you know, high shelf and even a high uh, pass filter or a low pass filter, I can, um, you know, create a darker thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't believe this. You said the, the day rate is 600 yeah that's what for this and you get so you get the piano organ house, house drums drums yeah and great control All the booths room. lots yeah. of space yeah, yeah that's great yeah. the piano and the b some of the stuff that's here is not mine the guy mm -hmm. that uh one one of the original managers of the place is actually is still um still alive and uh owns some of this gear this is a uh, b3 i think it's a 1957 i think mm -hmm. um it's i know it's a sought after year but um anyway it's it's cool. It, there's nothing, nothing like a real B3. Oh yeah. yeah, especially when you get the guys who know them inside and out. Oh man, yeah, yeah. The, it, most of these session guys just tear these things apart. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, when I when I look out in the control room after somebody like Gordon Mode has played it on a, you know, on a rock and tune that it's just a pile of wood in the corner that's yeah. shaking, trembling. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but somehow it still looks like that. They're, they're made like a tank. I mean, you know, anytime you see one of these, it's 50 years plus. They, they haven't made these since 1970. Wow. So I think it was, I'm trying to think of what year they started making them. But anyway, it's a, you know, if you see something like this, it, it's a classic, that's for sure. So there's another booth here there with a is. room above, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. We uh, generally cut acoustic guitar in here. Um, sometimes on orchestra dates, uh, bassoon. You know, it, it, depending on how many woodwind players, because you, if possible, you want the woodwinds separated from the uh, strings for mm -hmm. punching purposes. Sure. You know, so, but yeah, we'll have acoustic guitar in here and a couple uh, remember, I was talking about yep. the, <laughs> the Warm Audio 84s. I'm going to put a couple of those. These aren't the position. My assistant's just running behind me, afraid of the camera, I think, <laughs> uh, uh, setting up. But um, that's what we're going to do. But we use, gosh, I love 414s. Yeah. Uh, I love um, my WA-251s. Um, are, sound great. Uh, so There's so many mics that sound great on the acoustic guitar. Do you ever uh, we, use ribbons on an acoustic? I do, yeah, occasionally, yeah. What do you like? I've got, here I have Royer, um, uh, no, I'm sorry, um, Coles. I have the Coles oh, 4038s. Yeah. And I have uh, I have a pair of those. I have a bunch of Cascade stuff. I have the their Vinjet, if you've heard of that. It huh. It's their long ribbon. You know, the, the, it's, it's about yay big. Wow. And, and you know what I mean? The ribbon element itself is like yeah. an inch longer than the like that little drum when we were showing. So it's frequency response cuts off higher sure so it sounds really really good i have a stereo pair of those we use them a lot on orchestra dates as, as well um two of those vin uh um what are they called uh the gomez that i showed you okay then we have two fat heads too yeah just an extra booth it, but it's got a good sight line to the control yeah. room which is cool and then you said you put cabs up there so how do you how, well there's a back there, here? Uh, I, I hope this looks worth a darn it may be pretty bad in here but there's an old tech room um, right here where we keep, you know, all our microphone. Uh, yeah, if there's any more, if anybody needed any proof about the fact that I <laughs> use much warm audio gear, yeah. you can see that there's uh, quite an assortment of tube mics here. We have, gosh, you know, the 67s, 47s. We have yeah. the, the new 8,000, you know. Um, oh, cool. Um, just so many mics and dude, several guitar cabs back here. We have, uh, I don't even remember what all we have, uh, Vox, Fender, various, various things uh, that we you know drag out as we need them. This is what this is what I like about rooms like this is this is what's getting used. Oh yeah. Uh, often, you yeah, know. Yeah, this is just an old the assistants like, uh, coming check, in here. Check this out. Check these out. I mean, I when you when you look at these I feel like you're watching Hee Haw in 1974 yeah. and Dolly Parton's holding yeah, one yeah, of these yeah. singing Jolene or something. The way we work in Nashville like when it's 10 o'clock like you roll. Yeah. I mean, people you know, you get drum sounds. People 
are shocked when they go into a Nashville session, you know, and, and like, wait, wait a minute, like that was seven minutes, drums are done. It's like, yeah, like we, we, oh, we yeah. have to be, yeah. you know, you have to use stuff, you know, and yeah. just roll with it. Yeah, yeah. And I have not taken time to, to put, the, put these up, but uh, old C, or one of these C224s, no D, D224s, never even used them. Wow. You know, they've just, they were here when I moved in. Not this yet. is, a, this is kind of our backup, uh, uh, you know, two inch. Um, so it, this would only get used for, you know, an emergency. Back sure. in the day, of course, it would have been to sync two of them together for 48 tracks. Right. Uh, Pete Coleman, when, that I was mentioning earlier, you know, when he, when he mixes, he still mixes uh, analog through the desk. Sure. And, and his deal is, and uh, if I'm saying this wrong, Pete, if you watch this, I apologize, but um, he processes two tracks at a time on the desk, you know, using outboard. Like uh, he wants to get the API and the, the Avalon, the LA2A, whatever, prints it to tape and then into Pro Tools. Oh, Two okay. tracks at a time. Yeah, yeah. You can imagine how long that yeah, takes. takes. And then he spreads it out over the desk and does his balancing and any you know, light touch up EQs or whatever. Wow. But so he, he still uses this regularly when he's mixing. Yeah. But that's about the only time it gets used, to be real honest. We still have a radar as well. You see that radar oh, yeah. remote? Yeah. Yeah, you know, in Nashville, at one time in Nashville, man, those were before Pro Tools, but after tape, um, those were the thing. Because it, this, it, you know, if any of those guys out there are old enough to remember tape or working on tape or these, the, the remote works remarkably like a tape machine. Yeah. So, uh, you know, old dogs of that era, so to speak, were, were comfortable on the, even though it wasn't tape, Yeah. it was comfortable enough for them, you know? Like, I, when, we, when I started, uh, the guy that I used to assist for uh, getting my, you know, he was an analog guy mm -hmm. that had just moved into the modular. Uh, we moved from analog tape to the modular hard drive machine, and he still made <laughs> he still made me start every song. Like, like song number one ended at three minutes and fifty seconds. I had to start the next song at four minutes and thirty seconds. I said, like, Bobby, that don't matter anymore. Nope. No, like, like yeah. he could. Oh, yeah, he was yeah. like, no, I don't want to erase the song before. <laughs> he, he, just, he just couldn't get it into his head, you know. But uh, but it's in the machine in the in the rack there, the radar. It really, again, it just really doesn't get used anymore. Yeah. Um, but occasionally, we you know, like we did some transfers, yeah. you know, just recently. A guy's like, man, I've got this old hard drive, that SCSI drive, that's got, um, you know, radar stuff on, and I need to get it transferred. But we never, I never cut to it. I, I've, anytime I'm not using Pro Tools anymore, I feel like I have my hands tied. So tell me about this board. This is a Trident. It's a it's an 80 series, which a lot of the guys that are looking that are analog familiar will be like, what the heck? It's not like any that they've ever seen before. It's a very rare desk, uh, so it is an 80. If you look at the black channels, you know that that looks familiar to you, right? It looks like the EQ you know that you're used to, the mic pre that you're, that you're used to, but these blue channels. So I'm trying to think of what years it was, and I can't remember right off the top yeah. in my head. But but John Orm, which was one of the designers, you know, of uh, the the famous desks, you know, in the in the Trident days, like the '80 yeah. and whatnot. He he took over the company for a while and took the name back. And um, this was his like version two, where he was like, I, you know, all these years removed from this, yeah. I think I can do better. Okay. And so, you know, the, the guy that had this, um, d this desk set, mm -hmm. you know, kind of split it, you know, so, he'd, so yeah. he got 24 of each. This is a 48 desk, yeah. uh, channel desk. And you'll see for a Triton, you know, Tritons are always split desks. You got your, yes. your you know what I mean? You have your, your returns on the, and see, you, this is like an inline desk. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. But it's not as functional as it should be for inline. So to be, you know, real honest about it, we usually use this side as as um, tracking if, if we want it, you know, if we're not using outboard pre's or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and this side for returns. Okay, you know, yeah, yeah. It's just my assistant, for example, on tracking days, he's been here a long time. And so he's been through a B and a C. So he's like that split desk mentality is just where yeah. he's, you know what I mean? That, that's yeah. where he's at. So, um, um, that's where we, that's where we stay. So right. we try to, we try to, you know, s combine certain things and try to keep it down on tracking days, keep our returns to 24. Yeah. Just, you know, if we have to pipe three passes of keyboards to one stereo fader, so be it. You know, we yeah. just let the keyboard tell a player, tell us if they need a little more or less, yeah. you know, the pass they're playing now, uh, versus an old one. But, um, but anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a unique, you know, it's got a stereo bus compressor and a stereo bus EQ. Uh, that John made and I think Acoustica 
uh, you know, the software company modeled this just oh, recently. Cool. I, mean, I think they call it the Opal, and it's been getting a lot of great reviews. And I've not, I've not used it yet, even though I, I'm an acoustic guy, so I got to get my hands on that and try it out. But, but it's rare. It's very rare. I think this is serial number US one. What? <laughs> yeah. Holy yeah. cow! You don't see many of these. Yeah. Um, it was a short-lived era. Now I think though that after, the, you know, the Trident name went elsewhere, that he started. Uh, I know. I don't think I know. He he kept manufacturing these under the name Orem. O R A M. So you can still find these. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. But to actually have the Trident logo on it, you're going to be hard pressed to find, you know, to find one. You have a handful of Outboard Prees as well. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and oh, what a beautiful got, selection. Um, the Avalon 737, which is just a, a long time vocal favorite for me. Yeah. It's tube, but it's a very clean tube. Yeah. Um, it's got character, but not too much character. For example, like, Right underneath it is a, well, it's a warm audio, but it's a Neve. Yeah. And so you get a lot of transformer color. Like th this is cleaner, even though it's tube. It's, sure. um, I don't know, I, I just have always liked them. Do you have a go-to mic when you use this? Or it's all depends on, on the, the vocal. vocalist? Yeah, it right. depends on the vocalist. It can be an SM7, oh, wow. a 67, a 47. Yeah. Um, two, every once in a while, 251. Yeah. But for the most part, 67 and 47 is kind of, I would say that's 80% sure. of what I do, you sure, know, sure. just depending on how much uh, bottom end um, they do or don't have. Yeah. You know, the like 251s and C12s are beautiful mics, but they're just too sibilant on a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And then I, when I find myself in the mix phase, I'm wishing I didn't <laughs> yeah. didn't have that air built into it. I like I'd rather add it after the fact. True. But they're they're amazing mics. This is a really cool piece. I don't know that many people know about. It's Black Lion. Okay. And a lot of people think of Black Lion as you know the mod, mod. people sure. and th things like that. But they're making outboard now, and this is an 1176 on one side and a LA2A on the other. Mm. The cool thing, not only is this an incredible LA2A, like the the optical circuit in it is so smooth, so good. Um, you can put them in sear, you know what I mean? Oh, you can go LA2A 11, into right. 76 or 76 into LA2A, oh, which is a, you know, common. guys did that back in the day. Yeah. You know, when there wasn't as much outboard, sure. right? And you were committing to something to tape, Yeah. you know, so they would stack compressors. So you can do that now, again, yeah. you know, real easily in one two space rack. Yeah. And I gotta tell you, I mean, it, it, both sides sound really good, but That's I've awesome. been doing some stuff lately um, where I went into the LA-2A first and then uh, for, you know, just that overall creamy smoothness. Sure. And then I just a couple dB here and there uh, of the fast 76, yeah. just grabbing a couple peaks. Yeah. And I, I just really loved it. But um, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, classic API stuff. We got the the um, 550As and the Bs. Nice. And of course, a couple 512s. Um, GML EQ. Ooh, that's a that's that a, a luxury. Yeah, that's, a, that's a big daddy piece right there. <laughs> um, SSL bus compressor. Oh my gosh! What a great combo. Yeah, yeah. I love this. Is this I, the I love Avalon. It. This is this is my favorite version. Really? Of, that's cool. Uh, that one is just it smacks. How much money you got in your pocket? No, I'm kidding. It goes for four. I, I'm, jo I'm joking. I use this. Um, I, I use this. Uh, we keep it across a stereo bus, even on tracking days. Yeah. Just for the control room to sound a little better. Yeah. You know? um, I love Avalon stuff. Um, this is the, uh, was it the 2055? Yeah, the 2055 EQ. Mm -hmm. The top end of this EQ is ridiculous. It just sounds so good. And I, I'm, I'm sure they, I think they still make this. Mm -hmm. They, I have never purchased it, but I've always wanted the 2044, the, the stereo um, optical, you okay. know, where you get basically like two LA, two A's beside yeah, yeah, each yeah. other. It is butter. And I've just never, I haven't pulled the trigger yet. Every, every time I see one in reverb, I'm like, Ooh, do I, yeah, do yeah, I, yeah. do I, you know? To, but, uh, but I haven't yet. Uh, uh, the, U, the 610s from United, yep. uh, or from Universal Audio rather. Yeah, those are cool. So that, those are, you know, two of the main, uh, well, I guess four, four channels of the main tube pre, if we're gonna use tube stuff. Sure. Most everything else you see in here is um, solid state or whatever. Um, these are old gates that, gosh, I, I've never even used them. I think Pete uses them every once in a while during mixing, but yeah. I've never even used them. Um, the Amec 9098s, which Rupert Neve made. Ooh. So when Rupert, you know, when he sold the Neve name, he started Focusrite. You know, most people know oh, this. And yeah. he did the big Focusrite, you know, ISA stuff. And then he moved away from Focusrite and he started uh, working for Amec. Or, or 
not for directly, but like designing stuff for AMEC. Okay. And the, the 9098 console or an outboard series was is all Rupert Neve. And um, so this is probably, I would say it's more similar to what he does now. Okay. The, the R&D, yeah. you know, the Rupert sure. Neve designs, um, or what he did, uh, yeah. unfortunately. Um, but I came up on one of these desks, the 9098 desk. There was really? only two of them here in Nashville, and I used to work at one of those studios a lot. Yeah. And I've just never gotten over it. Like like that, that desk was magic. You yeah. Know? I, I wish I could have. They, they decommissioned it. Uh, true story. Unfortunately, there's only one left in Nashville now and sold it off. And at the time, you know, it was, it's a great buy for the desk. It was like 60000 some odd dollars. And I was... Man, I wanted yeah. to do it, but I just didn't have an extra <laughs> 60 grand laying around. Yeah. But I love using these on piano and acoustic guitar because I can, if I need to brighten something up, um, I can, yeah. or, or darken something, you know? Yeah. Right under that, I have the Warm Audio 412s. Just think of that as an API 3124. Yeah. But, oh man, I love them, dude. Like, love. These are one of my favorite pieces in existence. I like them. I have a 3124. And I got to be honest with you, I only use it when these are full. Interesting. <laughs> it's that good. Wow. And it's got a trim. Yeah. That's a is, big deal because, yeah. you know, APIs are hot. Yeah. And so I, I can I can safely get to tape. Yeah. You know, um, um, but I, I freaking love these things. Uh, Drummer, 1176, oh, 1178. Yuri. Yeah, LA 3As. I, man, I love these guys. The, the, I've only got one of them in my own rack. This the, whole section here is oh, just... Oh, yeah. There's nothing oh that would get, get, uh, get kicked out of bed for eating crackers, that's for sure. Um, but uh, get two of these, uh, and then the uh, 165. And then from there down, everything is broke. There ain't, <laughs> there's not one of these that works. So we run all our reverbs in the box. I got sure. the UAD... Um, um, not the Apollo, but you know the like satellite. satellite. Yeah. And we we just you know we actually run it off the con off the desk. Oh, cool. So uh, you know I, we bring up a, a 140 plate or a 224 or oh, something like cool. that, and we we just hit it, just yeah. like, you know, and, and bring it up, you know, like the return of it in the center section. That's Works awesome. well, you know, and it's uh, and it's always there and set, you know, like I said, these, you know, I still have a, a functioning PCM70 in my mix room, mm -hmm. and I have a functioning uh, 992 or 900. But um, there's uh, my 3124, which uh, whatever I said a while ago wasn't meant to be disparaging. I love my 3124. Sure. Um, I just like these. They, they, these have a little bit more open top end, you yeah. know, bigger transformers, the original spec 312 transformers. Yeah. And uh, the Heritage Audio, you know, Neve, and then all um, well, the Warm Audio Neve. Uh, my, I do have some real you know neve stuff but i keep it in my mix room yeah um, but these do the job i mean they're they're just great you know um people like to hate on heritage or, or some of these brands that are cheaper but man they're they're fantastic the warm audio 2a's and the db you know the um what replaced these yeah the dbx 160 xt's and i've got some x's too i've got a couple I think I got a stereo pair of x's in my mix room and then the xt's here yeah in speaker world i have um well when you see this big front wall, I get questions asked all the time. Are there, are there speakers up there? And there are, but from what I'm uh, from what I'm told, they sounded terrible. <laughs> you know, uh, very old, and and at this point, probably are just dry rotted and not even. They're not even hooked up to a power amp. Yeah. So uh, even though it looks like they're you know the typical speaker uh, soffit thing, we 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 don't actually you know use them. Uh, what I have in here, and I've not got it. That's an, I'm, this is good timing. I'm trying out these these atoms for the for the first time in this room uh, on a session tomorrow. I'm gonna have my assistant hook them up um, today. Um, I have the the, um, the the things that Bob Clearmountain have, have used the Dyn Audio Dyn Audio BM15, which are amazing. The, 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 that's what I've had in here ever since I moved in. They're not yeah. mine. They they yeah. belong here, and and they're great. And and you know they. They're not, they don't fill up the room though, sure. in a room this big. Yeah. And I've always kind of thought about putting something a little with a little more gas mm. for client pleasing purposes or what. But recently I, I worked at a studio down, um, I was tracking it down in, in Brentwood and uh, it was a room that had been, a, uh, it's brand names can stay out of, but they had a, another high end monitor in there for, for years, you know? And it was it, a lot like this, the, the, the you know, two, two drivers with, yeah. a, with a tweeter. And um, I never loved the sound of that control room, uh, but I knew those speakers were very, um, you know, uh, 
you know, very well loved by a lot of people and sure. also extremely expensive. Yeah. So I thought it was just the room or whatever. I went back, you know, uh, you know, for another session not, uh, a couple months later, and they had traded out to these. These exact, this exact, you know, ones, the, the 77 X's. Yeah. And and uh, you know, again, knowing I was in that studio that has a control room, I'm not in love with. Yeah. And I was like, wait, you know, like wait just a minute. Like this, this control room all of a sudden sounds good. Yeah. Like to me, like this is really, really working. And. Uh, I worked there a couple times and it had been a while and I kind of forgot really yeah. to be honest because I, I had not had very much experience with Adam monitors. Um, and then I worked in there just a couple weekends ago mm -hmm. and I was like kind of fell in love again. So I hit him up. I was like, hey, can I can I hear a, a pair of your 77s in here? So I just got those in. So I'm anxious to see if I, if I love them as much as I think I do. Yeah. Because, uh, um, you know, I'm just looking for money to I just want to spend some to money. burn yeah. yeah yeah that's awesome yeah but i still have the dyne audios down here on the floor because i'm not you know I, we'll, we'll just see how these work out but but um man i loved them in that room and they made a tremendous difference you know yeah tremendous difference from what i understand and what i'm hoping is that the sweet spot on these is wider so when you get the producer and the musicians and the artists and the stuff are all scattered out back here like yeah. they are all the time um the whole room is going to sound hopefully bigger, yeah. uh, a little a little brighter, you know, because the the, the dines aren't the, one thing they are not as crispy, yeah. Uh, but but also a wider sweet spot, you know. That's that's what I'm hoping for. So you're running Pro Tools, and mm -hmm. you have the the Trash Can Mac Pro. I do, yes. I, I've got uh, I've got one of these in here, and I've got one in my mix room as well. Uh, you know, they've been they've been a rock for me. Still working great. They've been an absolute rock. That's uh, awesome. And I got to be real honest, every Mac I've ever owned was an absolute just workhorse yeah. beast. All the way from the G3 yeah. back in 1990, whatever, yeah. uh, G4s, G5s, and then, you know, the, the, the cheese grater, the, yeah. you know, the, the first one, the original yeah. ones. I've still got, I think, two of those chassis laying yeah. around. I've never, I never had a one of them fail. That's never a, one hard drive, no, no RAM, yeah. no anything. Wow. The graphics cards, they were just beasts so uh so anyway i'm gonna rock these as long as i can because those new cheese graders yeah are you know the new ones Woo! they are they are proud of those guys oh yeah they are expensive so i'm gonna use that sure. as long as i can and then you have the avid the new 192 all the uh, 192s you know, or right what that what is what replaced the 192s yeah so yeah there's uh 32 channels and we're we we've got a 192 back there mm -hmm. um from the old rig yeah. and i think what we may do because it's not gonna um you know take a lot more wiring is we may hook that up so we actually so right now remember i told you i have 24 channel or um eight channels that are dedicated to headphone headphones sends. Yep. so i'm thinking about dedicating that to the old 192 so we have actual 32 playbacks that yeah. don't have to be um you know even on a tracking session on the mix session you need to blow all that up but uh yeah. you know what i'm getting at i'll have i'll have eight more channels of analog return if we want them when Pete's or somebody's mixing in here analog. Yeah. But on tracking days, I'll also have 32 outputs if I want it separate from the headphones. Yeah. Could we take just a quick look at the B room? You can, absolutely, yeah. Cool. The B room, it used to be my everyday home. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of a small control room and I had it just, just, just jacked up with gear. It yeah. was, yeah, it was uh, really full. But the problem is, is I live up on the north side of town in Hendersonville. Yep. And so I was commuting uh, every day, six and seven days a week. And I was even spending the night here sometimes, you know, because I, uh, you know, I, I really stay really, really busy. I've been really blessed to to get hired, yeah. <laughs> which is not always easy. But but man, it's just never been a never seemed to be a problem. So I was never home. And I have a t I had a you know, last summer. I had a 10 year old son that I really was having that parent guilt thing about like, man, I'm not doing right. Yeah. So I so I moved my main mixing rig home. And so we just now got this set back up to be uh, an overdub booth. Nice. Um, so what I, you know, uh, this is all gonna change. You know, this is just a very minimalist thing, but we've done some vocals in here last week. We did two or three days of vocals. It's a cool and, room. Uh, it is, it's got very high ceilings. And you know, I used to, again, I used to mix in here every day and you, You'd be surprised. Like it was the very first room that I that I'd moved into for years, out of even renting space on a music row, where I just set up my speakers and started listening. I'd be like, okay, like I'm yeah. I'm ready to take off. Yeah. Every other mo room that I'd moved into, I'd felt like it was a couple of weeks before I really thought that I was comfortable 
of what I'm sending out into the world. Yeah. And even the, you know that window right there, I was really worried. I'm like, man, I don't know. But um, but you know, there's there's insulation. You know, I mean, th this whole end of the room is absorbent. Yeah. You know, ceiling, e everything is is absorbent. So yeah, that probably great. has a lot to do with sure. it. Sure. Uh, so yeah, people can rent this room a lot cheaper. And you know, what I do is I typically do vocals in here and or close out mixes. Because I live in Hendersonville, mm -hmm. um, I can bring my laptop rig. Yeah. And you know, I have clients that live in on the south side of town or whatever, and I can just pipe in my, my laptop rig mm -hmm. and um, they can preview the mixes here. And maybe they've already previewed them, but we can make our last minute changes sure. without a big, you know, as big Drive. of a drastic commute for them to, yeah. Of course. But, uh, but I, I, you know, I'm gonna start mixing in here some too, so I can spend more time with my assistants and, and other, you know, when there's sessions going on uh, that aren't me, I yeah. can still be in the building some to say hi and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So uh, that's why I got the Yamahas in here and, and, um, you know, maybe some Adams uh, soon, hopefully, if the people at Adam are watching. Sure. So, <laughs> and there's a booth. You want to see the booth? Yeah, let's yeah, check it out. Yeah. So the, the, the part that we're in now mm -hmm. was the original home, you know, right. that goes back to the 40s. Yeah. You know, all this was officer, military officer homes, yeah. you know, back in the 40s for uh, the airport. Come on in. This, this, oh, this booth. this is cool. It actually records really, really well. When I first moved in here, I um, would this would this lighting help you see it better if I turn on that light? I don't have as much mood, but um, you see the high ceilings and stuff and, and the irregularities. And I stood right here and you know did a little. Uh, well, I don't sing, but I attempted to sing, and I was like, oh no, like. I'm not gonna be able to use this. It's just yeah. too wow. Yeah. And so you know, an old mix room that I had I had bunches of these 703 panels. Yeah. And that one's two inch yep. deep on that. And that that is two inch. So I brought all these in. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. And hung that and and put, you know, made this corner really tight. Yep. And, and and so the singer can be right here, look, you know, just like square in the eye with the producer or the uh, engineer. And um, as long as they're standing right under this. It sounds really good. Yeah. I mean, like it's really good. You don't even know the room is a thing. And um, running headphones, um, uh, we got an Apogee, like a 16 channel Apogee in yeah. there. And um, so I sent eight of them out here for the phones. Yeah. And th this is my original first mixer I ever owned. Yeah, that's amazing. So man, it did my heart good when I brought this guy out of, you know, like, it had been in a garage for years, you yeah. know, unused. And when I moved in here and had the need for a, a headphone thing, I, I'm going to drag that. I know it's overkill, but I'm going to drag that old Mackie out. And, and it did my heart good to see this guy get used again. And the thing is, this thing will outlive me. Yeah. <laughs> these, things, these things are beasts. I mean, you can, you can throw them across the room and it's still going to work, you know? That's awesome. But, um, yeah, some amps, a few amps in here, you know, we've had guitar overdubs for some rock bands and stuff. An old uh, Fender Twin. Um, this is a 67 basement head. Nice. And this Marshall cabinet right now is actually empty. Uh, I've got the speakers. I've got um, uh, em Eminence, I think they're called. Uh, I've got, in fact, they're right there. I've got, um, I've got those four, and I just have not put them in here yet. Um, so if uh, anybody watching is is a is a good uh, guitar cabinet wire, I, it, I was looking at John the whole time you're yeah, talking. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Somebody want to do that response. for me? I'll buy you. I'll buy you a, a nice lunch over here at Brothers Burgers. <laughs> But um, yeah, I gotta I gotta get that wired up, and, you know, because every once in a while, um, you know, these these heads and you know those cabs that like we had sure. over there, they get they get used from time to time. Yeah. You know, yeah, like for sure. That's awesome. And our Vox is great, man. Our, it's an upgraded one with the it's, it's got the ceramic cone, but there's been upgrades to the head and stuff too. And it, it's um, I mean the uh, the amp part of it. Yeah. And it, it's a it's a monster. That's an great. Absolute monster, yeah. Well, I appreciate you having me out. And um, yeah. where can people follow you, reach out to you, look up the studio? Yeah. Great, great. Uh, uh, Facebook, uh, you know, J Joe Carroll, C A R R E L L. And my, I guess you call it my brand page on Facebook is okay. In the Mix with Joe Carroll. That was a program I did for Warm Audio, uh, it's some tutorial content. And uh, But my Instagram is also In the Mix with Joe Carroll. Okay. And um, there is a Treasure Isle studio. Uh, Instagram page as well. Okay. And that's where, you know, the, 
Unfortunately, the, the Treasure Isle Facebook page and website is former management that's not even involved anymore. Okay, so, so it's not connected. Not connected. Okay, so don't even it. don't even bother going to the website and looking up Treasure Isle. Just go to my either my Instagram sure. or the, the studio Instagram or, okay. or my own Facebook and just hit me up. What about on YouTube? On YouTube? I, most I've done quite a bit of content, but it was always for other people. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, I did yeah. like Plug-in Alliance, sure. and I've got some stuff coming out with Kit and Acoustica. Okay. Uh, warm audio, but I don't have my, you know, your own but, thing. But there, you know, if 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 anybody's interested in tutorial content, there's yeah. yeah, I've got plenty of it up there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you having me out, and uh, yeah, we'll get out of your hair. Thank you for everything. You're very I'll put welcome. links to the in the description for all of Joe's stuff. Go check it out, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.